<laughs> Welcome to What the Flick, everybody. Night of season finale, uh, episode eight, uh, Call of the Wild. Um, you know, thank goodness we went an hour 38. Like, the weird thing is, is that is they don't even tell you. No. Like, I mean, no. nothing, they're not, they weren't. It's That's like, a movie. Right, right, that's right. right. It's like old school. Like This is the podcast. return of the Jedi like, They don't of the give night you any of. information about it. Like <laughs> yeah. a special 100-minute finale of, right, <laughs> none of that. Uh, but you kept, I kept, you know, pausing it and being like, I think this is going to go on. Like, especially at, like, minute 50, you're like, they're not done in 10 minutes. That cannot, that cannot happen. Oh, see, oh, so I, I'm on TiVo, so it immediately like, yeah. at the bar at the yeah, bottom yeah, telling right. me what I'm in for. Right, so. but yeah, I have to hit pause to see that bar. Ah. Oh. Yeah, so I knew it was going to be an hour and 45 before I started watching it. And my first reaction to that was, oh, thanks, God. Right, totally. <laughs> thanks, God. For a number of reasons. One, I, I have a lot of ground to cover here. Yeah, I loved this whole series so much. Looking forward to the last episode, but like a little worried that they're not going to be able to f have enough time to finish it. So when I saw hour and 45 on my DVR, I thought, oh, good. At least they took their time with this. And they weren't like, okay, 53 minutes, and we wrap this thing up, and we're out of here. And I think upon watching the whole hour and 38 of the actual show, uh, well, let me just skip to the end. Nailed it. Now, yeah, well, <laughs> okay. well, well, let, let, all right, so let's get it. Let, let's talk about. Uh, for, okay, so let's talk about the end first. Because did you? We had that the last little moment that we get in the show is the cat walking across. Right, you're wondering is he going to get the cat? He's seen the commercial. Right, right. He didn't say goodbye to the cat there. There's no way. I don't need more headroom. Um, the uh, <laughs> yeah. um, the uh, he didn't. You know. Uh, and then we get the cat walking across the screen, which, if you'll remember, was how episode one concluded. And it only stuck in oh. me because in talking about it, someone laughed at me. Because when when the father goes out, it's like the father doesn't believe, forget that his son's been arrested. His father focuses on the cab, not because he's a bad father, but because that's a moment of jarring reality sure. that this is real. My God, the cab is gone. So therefore, everything else they told me is also true. Right, right. Yes, yes. And, and a cat walks across the street as he's staring at the empty parking space. So there was, so we had, a, and I thought, and I thought at the time, accident and they left it in? Or would, did a handler release the cat? Yeah, right? cat wrangler. And now, now I'm pretty sure a, a yeah. wrangler released the cat. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I, I was wondering throughout the whole series, like the significance of the cat, other than what I'll call the semi-obvious, which is emotional connection and how that tells the story of John Tortura's character, et cetera, but, but it wasn't just jo about John Torturo because the cat's mingling in the house, that, and I thought that was somehow going to be related to solving the case, and like you say, there's a cat across the street in a totally, completely separate situation, and, and I think I fi uh, solved it. it, because it's referencing the cat burglar who did it. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Well, yeah. I, no, I, th I think the cat. I, I, think, I think the cat serves the same purpose as the eczema. We've been talking about like, what's the point of the eczema? Why bother with the eczema? And I think that it it it's a it's a human touch for the stone character, not just his sort of emotional relationship with this cat and his his inability to get rid of the cat, even though the cat, he's super allergic. But I think the the fact that he's dealing with these allergies and he's dealing with the skin condition and all this stuff. It's kind of this human touchstone that happens where if you are a lawyer handling a big murder case, you also, you know, one of the things that was so great in People vs. OJ, like Marsha Clark is fending off the media and spending hours and hours researching this case, and she still has to, like, make dinner for her kids. Right, right, right. Like, life doesn't just stop. Yeah, that's, okay, so all those things are right, but mostly you guys are wrong. Would you yeah. like to give a wrong answer, too, before I give the right answer? No, fine, go ahead. Um, John McLaughlin is dead, but we have Ben Mankiewicz. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> You know, the last thing that Stone says before he leaves is basically, don't worry, it'll be all right, right, to his random client call. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we know, no, it won't. No. It will not be all right. Uh, Nas is not all right. Nas's mother's not all right. Nas's whole family is not all right. Nobody's all right. And he didn't save anybody. You know, he kept Nas out of prison. It's a high point of his career, right? But Nas is in terrible shape. He is buying drugs. He is hates his mom. He's, he's got major work to do to repair that relationship. His community uh, fears, and him, distrust fears him. him and mistrusts him. Uh, but you can, what Torturo can do is save a cat. Like it is the thing that he was oh. able to actually do. It's one thing that he yeah. was like, okay, I got I, I, this. I actually think that that goes to the whole theme of the show, which is, yeah, yeah. life is screwed, right? right? Life is super, super hard. Uh, but our our saving grace is that 
is the, the, the things that we do that matter. Saving this guy's life, saving that cat. It, it's a, and I, I, I can empathize with this. I feel this. Like, at least I did that. Right, right, right. Sure. Right. And, and it, oh, those are good. I'm actually really surprised at the amount of closure that the show gave us because I knew it was such a scathing, um, you know, look at the system and how it works and the police and the lawyers. But we got a shocking number of happy endings as far as you know the interweaving storylines are concerned. Yeah, the idea that the, the box redeemed, and, and the, the ADA is yeah redeemed. that they're going to go after the actual perp is the like oh lives. I did not think I didn't think oh. we were going to get that much from them. We got we got conclusions, which I think is interesting, because I didn't think, we, but I don't think those endings were happy for anyone. They're not going to convict that guy. They have less to go on than they had with Nas, and the defense's argument of, you tried a guy, and the jury was 6-6 six, six on another suspect. That's the most reasonable doubt in the history of mankind. <laughs> you cannot convict the guy who did it. You can't. I could get him off. I thought that I thought the choice of, uh, the first time ever I saw your face at the end was an interesting song, because both Stone and uh, Daryl, no, in prison, Michael K. Williams. Uh, uh, Freddie. Freddie, talk about seeing Nas's innocence and how mm. it just radiated out of him and how it was so unusual for people who are spend their entire lives surrounded by actual criminals who actually are guilty. And so that theme song could almost apply to either one of them talking about their encounter with this guy. But unfortunately, this guy, having gone through everything that's happened, is now, as you say, a mess. He's a drug addict and you know he's got all these broken family relationships and all this other stuff that he's got to now contend yep. with in his life. Yes, he, he didn't go to jail. He got, he, you know, he, he got off on a mistrial, basically. But, 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 but that's it. Everything else is a so, disaster. But we'll get to Chandra in a second, because that's obviously a key plot point for her, and she is, certainly did not end well for her. And Box is back, I mean, uh, 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 Stone is back taking these calls, living alone, feeling sad, watching cat videos, on, you know, and, and, and procedurals. And, and cat commercials. Yeah, those depressing uh, ASPCA right, videos. Right, so he is, I mean, he is low, nothing changed for him. Nas is, we don't know what's gonna happen, but he might be a criminal, he's a murderer. I mean, he's a murderer, he participated in a murder, right, distracting the guard while the guy got his neck cut. He's Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, like yeah, he's okay. a killer, he didn't commit that murder, but he is a, he, you He's know. an accomplice. <laughs> He's a murderer. I, he said, to me, like I, I, I have a slight problem with you robbing a bank. You don't know the guy you're with had a gun and he killed somebody, and you were like, "Wait, you weren't supposed to shoot anybody." I might have a tough time sending that guy to prison for life. Distract the guard while I cut this guy's throat. Nope, you're. I, 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 right. got, I got you for first. I got you for first degree murder on that one. So, you know, he's a callous. We don't know. I mean, he might keep, not. If you if if the continuation of the story had Nas dead at 27 of a drug overdose, that would seem consistent with where he might be. Anybody at. else think he wasn't going to make it out of the prison alive? Yeah, like well, that was oh, the yeah, tensest, yeah, yeah. My, tensest <laughs> scene for really my, no yep. reason. My wife. Oh, something bad's going to happen. Something bad. I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> Stop saying that. That just makes it more likely that something's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. What she says at that moment d d does affect the taping yeah, from right, yeah. months yeah. ago. Yeah. So. Uh, that's why, actually, I think this slight disagreement about whether it was happy endings or not is why I absolutely love this show. I thought the ending was was also near perfect because it gave you enough redemption. Like, well, they're going to give it a good college try on the real killer, right? Right. Uh, and and so, thank God for that. He did get off. Thank God for that. The the cat is saved. Thank God for that. But. Nothing is all right. Right. Nothing right. Is all right. They, I mean, if they had given you a, a BS happy ending on the mom or Nas or or Chandra, Stone's ex-wife comes back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, please, 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 don't do that. Right. Yeah. Even the and, closures aren't like closures. That's right. Know? Yeah. And so it was just but the it's right hope. mix. It's, false hope. it's it's a stopping point without being the stopping point, I think. Because if we, the audience, hadn't gotten that scene with Box and the legal advisor in the casino, if we had never had, like, oh, so that's who did it uh -huh. moment. Because mm -hmm. the jury didn't get that. Nas True, didn't get yeah, that. yeah. Well, it, was, it didn't come had, up in the trial because Chandra and Stone didn't have it either. Right. Like Box but if, found but if it. we hadn't have gotten that, the ending would have been totally different. We would like, did Nas do it? Didn't yeah. he? Like, yeah. was it Dwayne? Like, there's, there's no compelling argument there. Well, they, yeah, they, but they, and I mean, it's nice that they gave it to us, but I didn't think the show was gonna. Yeah, uh -huh. it's not, well, it's not, and, and also they managed to give it to us without turning it into a who done it. Like right. everyone who watched the show certainly asked who done it, but it wasn't their first question. It's, it was never the mo the thing we most wanted to right. know. Well, yeah, uh, but you know, and I would have been frustrated because maybe I'm not a professional film guy, and I think that uh, like 
I was going to say you guys um, are um, like you like the. Uh, my sense is generally professional film critics like nebulous endings. Okay, mm. I do not. Okay, <laughs> I despise them. Um, but this was perfect because it was not so nebulous that you're like, ah, it's your call. I don't know what happened, right? It was super clear, but yet. It doesn't it, end with the cops arresting it, the bank guy. Yes, you know, and it doesn't know. end with a nice bow tie at the or bow at the end. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. it says, yeah, yeah, this was really messed up, and they're not going to recover from it. Right, right. The but reverberations like, will continue. Yeah, it's yeah. not a movie where everything works out at the end. Mm. But uh, hey, at least you know what happened, and you and 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 yeah, there's and there's, at least there it wasn't a grotesque injustice, and you could sleep at night. Right. Yeah, and, and the uh, scumbag stepfather does get the house. And he yeah, will. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the trust fund. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like he can stop uh, working at the gym, hitting on the women. Like enough. Yeah, he's not. He, yeah. won. he won. You got it. You won. Yeah. Um, well, you know, for all the people who asked me on Twitter who I thought did it, this is precisely why I never pick because I'm always wrong. Yeah, and good, and, good, and people were sending me these lengthy treatises on why it was stone all along. It's like, right. well, you're wrong. <laughs> it was stone. That's awesome. God, I would have okay. been so angry if that guy's explanation was like word for word, right? <laughs> I read that whole thing. Okay, so I've got to now say uh, what I thought Ben would bring up. So halfway through the series, I call Ben. I'm like. I got it. Mm. Like I don't. I don't want to ruin it for you. <laughs> this, is, this is a verbatim guy. She's like, I don't want to ruin. It. I don't want to tell you because I don't want to ruin it. That's because because sure I'm is. so sure that I'm right. Right. That me explaining it to you, you're gonna go like, oh god damn it, you were right. Right. <laughs> so uh, I was positive that it was a stepdad, mm -hmm. and I had uh. concocted a whole story. And this was, but to be fair to me, before it became <laughs> someone has to be. be fair. Yeah. <laughs> before it became clear. That he was one of the primary suspects, yeah, right? You know, uh, most, people, well, most people who are wrong about something are wrong because they don't have enough information. They can't go back later and go. To be fair to me, I didn't have I enough didn't have information. <laughs> yeah. That, that, uh, that you know whatever. That no, women, no, no. The no, women I, can't lead Fortune 500 companies. I just didn't have enough information. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, I'm actually saying kind of the opposite. Like, I, I like, I didn't have enough info, and I knew that he was, uh, in my mind, a prime suspect. So like kudos to me for putting him in that category, okay. And yes. then if I had like known that they were going to play him up, of course he was a suspect. Okay, <laughs> and if I had known that he would, they were going to play him up as such a primary suspect, I wouldn't have been, I wouldn't have thought it was him. You see what I'm saying? You were anyway. slightly ahead of the curve. Okay, but totally wrong. Okay, fine, totally wrong. And but that's like so. But that the reason I brought up all this, other than the fact that it's funny how wrong I was, uh, is is the. I felt conflicted about the real killer, right? Because he they never showed him before like I mean they did briefly, you know, the funeral uh fight, fight and then But the, it came the, out of nowhere. Yeah, and he Too kinda yes, yeah, so, so the killer comes out of nowhere and you feel like, well, it was at least a third of a who done it and you didn't really give us a chance to figure out who done it. Right, well, you, but that I mean, wasn't the point, though. This isn't like before? an Agatha Christie thing. Have we had, had which, we seen that picture on the beach before that Box had? No, no. Like, was that no, in no, a scene? That was like, new. No. I could have picked. And up I don't know. And I don't know that we'd ever seen the 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 footage of her turning around okay, so like so right, no, this. Right. So that's, those are a couple of the significant flaws, and I, I think it's for a show that strived for so much, and clearly, you know, I mean, if Making a Murderer was 13 episodes, I mean, this this obviously had 13 episodes in it, and they went with eight. So. They were ambitious, deserve credit. I give them an A, but they have some things that were wrong and in ambition. One of them was the timeline. I think they should have given us a timeline. I mean, this was in many ways a procedural. One thing Law and Order does is let you know when things the are happening. Chirons, yeah. Would have really helped for Nas's progression or descent into depravity because many of us, I think, thought it was really quick. I get it. We keep having to tell ourselves this he is was what in there Rikers for months. does. But you right, you'd say, okay, this must be months later. This happened over eight months. It didn't happen over eight weeks, right? right. Mm -hmm. But it wouldn't have killed us to just have a couple of June 2014, October 2014, or even just Marcus. a line of dialogue. Like I've been like, here for six months and I'm still waiting for my trial. Right, you know, right. yeah. Something. I think they wanted to leave Not that, that vague particular on. particular line, but you know, <laughs> something like that. I think they wanted to leave that vague on purpose. Well, they could have given us months. Yeah. Like they, yeah. maybe, maybe not the, maybe not the, the, the Chiron, the, yeah. but the, as Lonzo said, working it. Something in the dialogue. Then look, Chandra and Amara Karen, who's still my, now my favorite actress, oh, working. Oh God! Yeah, and her so moment. She almost every episode she has a moment, as I say every time, where she doesn't speak and she delivers a ten performance. And her reaction to Helen Weiss's evisceration of Nas on the stand, mm. where she can't even stand up to redirect, 
is fantastic. Her, mm -hmm. you know, and her, her questioning of her own witnesses was great too. Yeah, totally. But her, but I, I love her little moments of silence, which are so yeah. hard and, and such a measure of, of, of what a great actor is. And and two. she was fantastic in that, huh? Two, two, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, but then, like, we seem to get the impression that she was highly confident. She's clearly horribly bungling, and they sort of sacrificed her in the story to get us to this moment that allowed Stone to, to deliver, to the, deliver yeah. the closing arguments, and they really destroyed her to get us to there, and I imagine, to me, there was a more sophisticated way to get there. I could forgive the making out, which seemed out of character, because at least she jumped back from it. Um, but, I mean, drug muling and... And then the just ignoring Stone and not checking with anyone else of going ahead and putting, and, on the stand. and putting a guy on the stand who's like, yeah, and then I fell asleep and I don't know what happened. And then I took the knife <laughs> that has her blood on it. Like, yeah, don't put that guy on the stand. Don't do that. That's a terrible legal No, you're, you're right. And it's, it's funny because I don't know if you saw Southside with you yet that opened this weekend, but there's a lot of dialogue in the film where... Michelle Robinson is saying that she doesn't want to date Barack Obama because she is a woman of color in a white, you know, like corporate law firm. And the last thing she wants to do is to be taken less seriously by dating the one black guy in the office. Hmm. And so I would imagine that for somebody like Chandra, who's at this high powered firm, being a woman of color would make her all the more cognizant of having to deliver like double quadruple her her you know peers in order to get ahead in that field so and that's she, why and, i found uh, first the making out and then the drug dealing like come on this woman's she, smarter than that and she knew her play i don't mean her place in the in the in the uh, uh, put her down mm -hmm. but she knew her place in the world and how difficult her place in the world is because when glenn headley used her because of her ethnicity, right. she was aware of it, and sure. it bothered her. She got what was happening. She's not blind yeah. to those circumstances. And then to your point, another, I, I can't decide if this is a flaw. It might be a grave fall, but I could be talked out of it, and I might be able to talk myself out of it. Lord knows I'll try. Yeah. Um, the, uh, uh, but Box, be this great to detective, to be fair to, <laughs> fair me, to me, I may contradict myself very effectively. <laughs> um, Box, getting around to looking at what happened to Andrea in the half hour before she got in Nas's cab during closing arguments, essentially. <laughs> like, he only got around to it then? Like, like, hey man, this is, a long period of time went on if you're a good detective. So then we could argue, maybe their point is, maybe he's not a good detective. Well, maybe, maybe he latched into, as we know happens so often, he, this set of circumstances is so A plus. It's so clear to me that this guy did it that I don't need to go back, yeah. and then... I think he uh, had a confirmation bias. He was just trying to... Sure, only okay, looking for the that, stuff that that's was the way under, to talk me out of ...underpin it. what he already thought, which is that Nas did it. I actually think you guys are being unfair to the show, and and, uh, and, and I'll, t I'll tell you why. So, uh, I think Box is a, is a really good detective, and it was gnawing at him the whole time, but as the p show is making the point is that even good detectives, okay, yeah, that's even it, right. good prosecutors, are like, well, we got to do the job, okay? But, he, and but we, Box we got missed, this guy. He missed the mortician and, too, though. Yeah. So I know. And Dwayne Reed. No, but there, so that's really important. And I worked for, as a prosecutor for like half a second uh, as an intern for two summers, two different places, right? And so, yeah, I, I don't even know if that's relevant to this conversation. But the point is, like, career is shockingly important to these people. Like to the point where it really bothers you at your core how much, as you see in the news. I think my reading of the uh, having done covered the news for 20 years affects us more. Like you think, no, but you're not going to put away a guilty person, are you? Because it's slightly easier to an innocent person. I'm sorry, an innocent person because it's like, but that's death row. Or, no, you're not. Oh my God, you did it 20 times in a row. How could you have done that? <laughs> but it's the banality of evil that I thought this show showed so well because they were not evil because box was a good detective but he knows that this is where my prosecutorial you know experience is slightly more relevant is that he knows if i go look at the mortician if i go keep digging mm -hmm. i'm digging for the defense mm -hmm. because everything i dig up is going to present other suspects we're already going forward on this guy yeah but that, i gotta be done but okay but that, let me, i'm sorry because I, I this is the thing jack and i maybe argue about most and and i disagree with you only on 10 percent, but it's such a critical 10 percent because it's not the careerism it is for many no question we see it all the time in prosecutors in texas who are putting people on death row you're like it's inconceivable that you think you're this right this often that you're <laughs> mm -hmm. you ignore 
uh, clearly uh, evidence to the contrary this often. But for Box and for Helen, and, and the way they, because Box doesn't want to golf, right? And mm. he sits by himself alone at the bar. He's not interested in career. He's interested in getting it right, in winning, in winning. But that's, that's a different thing than, the second thing you said is totally right. Like, yeah, if I talk to this guy, it's going to get used by the defense. It'll undermine my case. And I know this guy did it even if something gnaws at him. And Helen, she puts on the walking shoes. Like, she's, this is where she is. She is not, she, she would turn down district attorney, a woman like Helen. Like, mm -hmm. she, this is what she does. And so, the, but anything, they still are dedicated to their craft. And, and their dedication to their craft and their job is what obfuscates the truth. When she says in that moment of like, well, you're presenting compelling evidence against Paolo Costanzo, against the mm -hmm. financial advisor, it's still 58-42 in favor of Nas, so we'll press on. But it's not careerism, right? It's I, pragmatism. I, I really, I, it's yeah, what? we do disagree. Pragmatism? It's pragmatism. And, prag and pragmatism and, and, like, all those things when she says to, we already saw it from her because we saw it when she said to with the, the. With the corner guy, the like, corner guy, what do you want me to say? What do you, you want know? me to say? And she's like, uh, say the second thing. I like that yeah. better. And he could say either one with just as much passion, and that does not bother her in yeah, any Yeah, no, I, so we do disagree a little bit. I, I think that, that. It, she didn't think Nas did it at that point. She like she didn't know, right? When when Box comes with the new evidence, she pressed on because she's it's too embarrassing to walk away from this case, and that's why she she and the show makes everyone compromise themselves. And she yes, compromised yes, herself when she said the cops have no other suspects, and Box gets up and leaves. Yes, right? which is great and, and a great parallel and, to because she knows to that's the, a lie. Yeah, but a great parallel yes. to the mother Mr. walking out moment. Totally. Yeah, you yeah. Know, it's like, like a, each it, each side suffered exactly, a terrible Exactly. Yeah, the jury gets to watch somebody do And Box may have thought I'm going to do that because they had this damaging moment with the mother. I'm, I mean, clearly Box timed it. I mean, yeah, he, oh, totally. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. And, and, what and, was doing. and to her credit, obviously, I mean, she has a conscience. The prosecutors you describe are conscience free. She did. She was plagued and, and right and then, without checking with her boss, anything at the end of the trial, she's like, so what are you going to do? And she's like, we're, we're out of this one. That's why yeah. she put her walking shoes on. That's yeah. Right, right, yeah. yeah. No, and, and I don't know if we've mentioned it enough, but Jeannie Berlin was oh, so fucking great on this. I mean, the performances are all really good. I love Glenn Hadley's one scene here. Mm. The <laughs> way she just, like, the, that pivot from, like, um, friendly to, like, yeah, pack your fucking <laughs> desk. Just, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. but yeah, Jeannie, Jeannie Berlin, Berlin is so great, so yeah. great. Yeah, right, Tim, we keep cutting Tim off. I'm sorry. But... Oh, sorry. I mean, it's, uh, all everything you're saying is good. I'm just one more We're voice. bullies. You're, <laughs> you're, you're, with three, you're with three bullies. And, and maybe yeah. one I want to say now is related to the conversation ten minutes ago, but it was interesting to see how... Fox started the, the show with, like, I'm 100%, this is the guy. And then you learn that the system is not, like, it's not who they think did it. It's who the odds are in favor of getting a conviction for. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't really yep. matter what they think. And at that moment, you know, Box thinks something new and different. He's not 100%. In fact, he's way less than 100%. And all he can do in that moment is get up and leave to maybe cast the thinnest shadow of a doubt with the jury because he can't present new evidence. He can't call witnesses. He's just a cop. He in could. Fact, I mean, he's, he's not a cop anymore. He could obviously, at some point before closing arguments are finished, say, or before the defense is rested, say to the defense, uh, "Call me." I mean, he could. He could. He if could if undermine he the case. To, he could have done. Like, yeah. like that's as as Stone thought yeah. that that Box left him the CD. He didn't, of course. Freddie did, right? We don't know. Uh, of the, I don't think we know. Oh, no, 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 no. We, we, we see Freddie has, has it. it. Remember the the yeah, right. So we think he gave it to. Yeah, yeah. no question, no, it's right, Freddie. Yeah. Which, right? in my mind, is just so that Totoro could deliver his like Emmy award winning speech mm -hmm. at that moment. No, no, no. I don't. I don't. But I don't think Freddie thinks it's going to get Chandra taken off. I think he thinks it's going to be a mistrial. Yeah, Freddie. Freddie. Freddie knows that's a mistrial. From from a writer's room perspective. From a Oh, well, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, by and the way, I love the judge, by the way, the, 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 the scene in his chambers and then the later, like, I don't like the word deadlocked. I don't, mm, no. That Foreman, that's Foreman. That's, that's, <laughs> yeah. a, that's a ballsy down. Foreman. He's like, yeah. yeah, not going to happen, mm -hmm. Judge. So, so uh, <laughs> to, to box there, uh, first of all, Freddie is redeemed by sending that uh, DVD and, mm -hmm. and saying, even though he's a super bad guy who's the head of this criminal organization, and he would love to have Nas as a companion for a long time, he helps Nas anyway. To try to get the mistrial. Well, if there had been a mistrial, would that mean that Nas would be free, or that Nas would have no, to would stay, stay in, in jail longer. while they restarted? It's over also the whole that thing. it's double because it might maybe. Be, yeah. I mean, in fact, most likely in most circumstances, prosecutors would have filed notice right then to refile the charges to keep him in prison, obviously, and then they could obviously at a later date 
choose not to. But Which also made, would fit into Freddie's agenda. I'm just wondering totally. what I, his agenda is. I, I understand, but, but he still right. he still prevent he still played a, a he attempted to help Nas not go to prison for life right then. And, yes. and yes. he says, which you remember, he gave him the right shirt and tie, yeah. mm -hmm. all the things that he actually had been helping him throughout. But I want to go Although back to Box. I did put him, give him a tattoo on the jury side. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Uh, I want to go back to Box for one quick second because I think it's a really important character here, because. To me, the conflict uh, that Box has in his head, in, in all that that long bar scene with the golf clubs, etc., is the conflict between the job and the profession. The job is get your criminal conviction rate up. Don't like all the other cops are like, why are you still here? Why? Why do you care? Why do you care? <laughs> I won't even. We're answer. not supposed to care. Guy right? wouldn't even answer. A, wouldn't even answer a simple question on yeah, the guy's name. Yeah, because mm. Box has always gotten on their their skin. Because he actually cares to do the job. That's right. And so, or he takes it as a profession. Right. And the professional side of him is, oh, I know he didn't do it. It's gnawing at me. It's, God damn it. I'm going to go back and check the tape. Even though the job tells me, shut the hell up. We already got the and guy. Maybe he needed no. to quit the job to do that. Maybe. That's, and maybe that's so. a great symbolism there, too. That's right. But that was for us. Like, that didn't really have a whole lot, except for them n choosing not to prosecute further at the end. That was for us, the audience. He didn't actually ever contribute to the freeing of Nas or to doing real justice, right? No, he could have. That's right. And that's well, why, he does, again, he does go to Helen with what he knows. Well, and yeah. That yeah so he, that's that's she could like, have the whole revived. time, and maybe I'm just used to procedurals, the whole time I was waiting for sure, him to be like, right. yeah, that I figured out who the real guy is. So we need to get this evidence in the right. And he never does that. The reason I brought up Freddie is because you're right. He could have. He could have put in a manila envelope, the pictures mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. that he has with on the beach with her and the financial advisor, a photocopy of the $300,000 to stone he could have done all that but that's why this show was awesome because right, he does because they because they did that balancing act yeah where box is not that nice a guy also, right but he does have a conflict and he's also not that bad a guy he also hates guys like stone I mean yeah. he sees yeah. guys like stones working against justice Right, that's like, right. You know, that's, that guy's his enemy. That's why he's not so, going to help. So yeah, he's not going to come sweeping in as the great warrior of justice, but he is going to plant just enough discord. Right, but to, in a sense, that's this thing from from you know, being a cakewalk, and and he succeeds in creating a deadlock jury. Uh, let's uh, before we go real quick. Let's because you know, so the heroes here in many ways are Box, Helen, and Stone, in yeah. some ways, mm -hmm. in some ways, right. They and keep the wheels going. They keep the right, but I mean, and they're 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 the professionals of yeah. this, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, they have some sense of honor, and I think Freddie too, because even though Freddie is a yeah, Freddie only, a Freddy only hurt, otherwise Nas would have been a PD. Freddie yeah. Fred only hurt other criminals, and Freddie has a rule, and Freddie's not going to kill an innocent guy, and you know, it's, but but that said, like going back to the conversation I had last week, like so, the show, which is about sort of a, a a system that massively has mistreated everyone, sort of in the system, potentially mistreated them. Uh, but many of those people, minorities, young black men primarily, and brown men, and then sort of the the, the idiots here are the you know are those people, and 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 here's and, and and Chandra, who turns out is sacrificed to the altar of the good lawyers like Jonathan <laughs> Stone. So I just like watching it from that point of view, since I had that exchange with a Twitter follow, a nice Twitter ex uh, exchange with a Twitter follower last week. So that happens, right? Yeah, it turns out it does. It's like I'm one for 178 now. Um, <laughs> And uh, and I was just like, huh? Well, okay. Like the 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 black and brown people are all they're all criminals and incompetent, and then they're these three sort of. Like, oh, I yeah. see. No, I think that's unfair uh, because I Freddie's a good guy. Uh, Nas is to some degree redeemed, although he you actually think less of him by the end than you did in the beginning when you thought he might have been a murderer. He's certainly victimized by the system. He's certainly victimized by it. And I, I actually, I, Helen, I am putting in the hero category barely because you said it. I wouldn't have initially. I think her continuing the case is really, really deplorable. But, she did, but, but that moment, uh, as you know, that decision right then without checking with her boss, I'm going to let him go right now. That was a... Oh, so, yeah, yeah. of course. I know. Yeah. That's why I, I think it's not a crazy thing to put her in the hero category. But the flip side is... Also, she's got to share that evidence with the defense, the ones that Box brought her. Mm. She doesn't share that. She's got to wrap that case up. Because yeah, yeah. if no, that evidence right. comes out later, mm. she's in some trouble. There are a lot of bad, these guys are all balancing. Nobody is standing up and being a true hero. Because that would sacrifice your career, right? That would do it. To that extent, mm. to that extent, unquestionably, uh, you're right. A lot is being written that, that we learned about Nas. That we know that he's messed up now. But, like, the evidence of the two kids he hurt in high school. And we talked about this before. But I... I really think it's unfair because they suggest that, oh, it turns out 
may, clearly Rikers did something to him, but he wasn't perfect to begin with. But I, I think it's all on Rikers because I think the ways that he wasn't perfect are insignificant. They are the ways that, that all of us aren't sure. perfect. I mean, selling Adderall to make an extra couple of bucks is, to your friends does not even, it barely raises my suspicion about somebody. No, uh, yeah, nothing. And, and, and being a young kid after 9-11 who uh, 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 went too far in hurting kids at school, you got in fights at school. I just don't think they're that, they weren't, it was, it's all on Rikers to me. It's still pretty much all okay. on, That was a guy who was going to grow up, be a decent, good, contributory member of society and got Rikered. So that's really interesting because of all the flaws you thought uh, were that you listed in the series, including Chandra, I actually don't comp really agree that much. I, I thought Chandra was... Not bumbling, but she was a rookie, and she, she she acted like a rookie throughout. She was passionate. She liked Nas. So I okay, yada yada, right? But the one thing that I thought was a real fault was he got too hard too quick, as you mentioned, right? At Rikers, and I, it became all across as not believable. So it's a slight flaw. But now that you outlined it in the way that you did, I thought maybe that was also intended. That w what they're kind of trying to show you in this in this series is. That context is everything. Like if you grew up in this environment, you'd be this person, okay. And yeah. if you grew up in that environment, you'd be that person. And if you worked in this system, you'd be person Z, right? And so they did that with Box and and Helen and Stone, and that's and now they're saying now and, if you were in Rikers, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, it, and and then it makes me think that the series was even more perfect than yeah, I realized. Yeah, because because the yeah. financial advisor guy is certainly in the same situation. He's either going to make bail or get get soft, get kid glove treatment in a way that somebody like Nas is never going to get. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd love to see it go on because there's a whole. Mm. Anyway, we got to go. It was great, though. and it, I want to give one yeah. last shout out to Fred Elmes, who is the director of photography oh, on yeah, this. Beautiful show. Who shot Blue Velvet and Synecdoche, New York, and mm -hmm. is one of the greats and did an amazing job. Well, it's not his fault about Synecdoche. <laughs> I love that movie. I, no, I know it. I say it deliberately to, to you and only you. Uh, well, not only you. I know there are others, but I was, uh, that movie just made me feel uh, 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 dumb as a post. <laughs> that it did its job. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I want to leave it on this thought because I love that you brought uh, uh, how they shot it in. Uh, because, I, I, I mean, I thought that last episode was a masterpiece. I mean, I loved every second of it. Not just every second. I loved every shot of it. Mm. As as they're wa as he's walking out, and you're like, "Get out! Get out! Get out quicker! Let's go! Don't dilly dally!" Like right? How many? A part of it is like, how many doors did he have to go through? How long was that process? Well, like which, by the way, more. makes yeah. you think. And it's not just the cinematography, or just it's the it's the director saying, "We want him to go through five doors," right? Because that is what we're setting up. Everything was symbolic. Every shot was. And every shot was beautiful, even though it was super ugly. Mm. Right? The surroundings were ugly. But I, I almost paused at every shot in that like last 10 minutes of, of that. And you know, when the gate opens and you wonder. You, that would have driven me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> when the I gate. I, I thought about it, though. I, when the, I paused in my mind. When the gate opens and you wonder, like, oh, shit, did none of his family show up? And then they do. And, like, yeah, there's a lot and of how, that and how, we got, how isolating <laughs> is this whole process? I mean, in the hall, that great shot of. The parents are sitting alone together and not speaking. And Stone is sitting alone and not speaking. And Helen is sitting alone and not speaking to anyone. And Chandra is leaning against the wall and not speaking, knowing that her career is probably over. And this guy who she was probably falling in love with. And then they sit, they never look at each other, Chandra and Nas in court. And then as soon as she says, we're not going to refile, and Stone says, you're free, she packs her back, she walks out. No, nope, not a word, nothing. Mm, She's gone. Yeah. Yep. Like it just—it's so isolating. There is no humanity. And then Freddie makes it a point to not be around when Nas is there. There's as no well. humanity. Freddie's like, "You're gonna be free. You're gone. You can't look back." And I can't see you. Yeah. I can't have that sense of look what I can't, what I'm never gonna get. Anyway, yeah. we gotta go. But uh, you're right. So many good. Who's the who shot it? Fred Elmes. All right, there you go, uh, guys. Uh, uh, th uh, 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 final grades. A plus. A. A. I really wanted to say. Uh, uh, wrong and give a different grade like like John McLaughlin, but, but those grades are correct. <laughs> <laughs> right! An A! Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>